Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to look at the Ethereum Bitcoin ratio and investigate historical trends to help identify what we can theoretically expect going into the next 120 days or so. So if you guys like the content, please subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Now, you guys know that I've spent a lot of time talking about this theoretical move of the Ethereum Bitcoin ratio. We also remember back at the very beginning of 2020, we identified this fundamental momentum shift in the Ethereum Bitcoin ratio. And this move here started in mid-December, and that's when it rallied to the top, okay? That's when it started, it started in mid-December, and it, appreci it appreciated by approximately 55, 60% or so from the bottom, and we've seen similar price appreciations as well, starting in, say, mid-December here. And then the other one started in, um, uh, this one started in, in mid-December. This one over here, I guess, actually started in, in January. And then this one started in, in uh, the first week of January with a pretty nice rally. And then finally, we had this price appreciation in the prior year. So these were the main moves that we've seen of Ethereum against Bitcoin sometimes starting either in mid-December to mid-January. And you guys know this, this is, this is business as usual. However, um, I thought it would be interesting to take uh, and actually measure out the Ethereum Bitcoin ROI as measured from December 1st, because the thesis is that by buying Bitcoin or by buying Ethereum with Bitcoin in December, then at least based on historical data, you're, you know, you're, there's a good chance, not, there's no free lunch, of course, uh, but there's at least a decent chance that you would see a positive, a nice ROI over the next 120 days, right? So 90 days from the end of December or 120 days from the beginning of December, because, you know, beginning of December at 120 days, that gets you through the next four months or through the first quarter of the year. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So what we're going to look at is we're going to look at the normalized ROI of the Ethereum Bitcoin ratio as measured from December 1st of each year and just look at it over 120 days to get us through the end of March. So this is 2015. And in this case, you can see that the Ethereum valuation gained 10x on Bitcoin. We don't expect something like that, but just to give you an idea, that was in 2015. This was 2016. And you can see it was not as impressive as 2015 as measured from December 1st, but still a pretty impressive run. Note that this is a logarithmic scale. So this is 10, or sorry, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so each major tick, here's a major tick, 10 to the 0 is 1. Another major tick is 10 to the 1 is 10. So this is a logarithmic scale. And you can see that in 2016, we had a pretty, we, we, we did pretty well too. So this would have been, buying December 31st, 2015, and then watching the ROI over the next 120 days going into early 2016, and then the same thing for 2016, except going into 2017. And then the 20, buying buying it in 2017, we, we got this blue curve, which still was pretty decent. I mean, at the top, at the local top, you still would have seen approximately a 2X on, on your on the Ethereum Bitcoin ratio had you bought December 1st. Now, it would have gone down in the short term um, by a decent percentage, in fact. But the point, again, is to remember that this is not a day trading game as far as I'm concerned. Um, it's it's more about just waiting for these momentum shifts to take to take place. If they take longer than we expect, that's fine. We'll, we'll still, you know, we'll be ready for it when it happens. Uh, but at least we can use historical data to try to inform when, when might we expect to see uh, Ethereum really gained value against Bitcoin. So that's 2017, and then here would be buying the end of 2018, and then selling sometime, or just watching the ROI over the next 120 days into December, or into January, February, and March, and then this would be the last one, okay? Now, one important thing is you can see every single year, had you bought Ethereum with Bitcoin on December 1st, the following year, after 120 days, you always would have seen it appreciate against Bitcoin. Yes, the last year it would have only been a, it would have only barely appreciated, but there would have been a point where it would have appreciated by about 50 to 60 percent at the local top. It's just that it came down later on in the first quarter. But 
these years are not all the same. And one of the things that makes these years different is that sometimes on December 1st, Bitcoin is above the 20 week. And other times on December 1st, Bitcoin is below the 20 week moving average. The green lines show the years in which Bitcoin was above the 20 week moving average on December 1st. The red lines show the years in which Bitcoin was below the 20 week moving average on December 1st. So you can see that the, the local tops of each of these moves were better in years when Bitcoin was in fact above the 20 week moving average. You can see the ROI was higher. The lowest in fact being just over two, uh, just over two X. The years that are red were basically, it was more or less of a wash, um, but you still were able to see a, a 50 to 60% return against Bitcoin had you cashed it out at the most opportune time over the next 120 days. At some point during that 120 days, Ethereum would have appreciated approximately 50 to 60% against Bitcoin, even when Bitcoin was below the 20 week moving average starting December 1st, okay? But we can even break this down further. The green lines now show when Bitcoin was above the 20 week moving average on December 1st and held it for the next 120 days, meaning for the next four months, December, January, February, and March, Bitcoin remained above the 20 week moving average. And you can see these two years is when Ethereum performed by far the best against Bitcoin. The year that it broke, it broke the 20 week in the next 120 days, you can see it was rallying. So it was doing quite well. And in fact, it was ahead of the other years. But Bitcoin broke the 20 week. We tend to know that Ethereum performs worse than Bitcoin when Bitcoin breaks down below the 20 week. And then you can see the Ethereum Bitcoin ratio started to rapidly depreciate because of the fact that Bitcoin broke down below the 20 week moving average. So while we can look at these five years and easily just compare them, one, one interesting thing is to recognize that the, the trends that you see are all very different because it always depended on what Bitcoin was doing. And during the, these two years that are color coded in green, Bitcoin was above the 20 week on December 1st and it held it for the next 120 days. The yellow line, Bitcoin was above the 20 week on December 1st and it broke it in the next 120 days at some point. And then the red lines where Bitcoin was just below the 20 week on December 1st and, and, and maybe it popped above it a little bit, but it was not holding the 20 week as support um, at any point during those 120 days. So hopefully this information is useful. Just for those who are curious, this is what it looks like on a, on a linear scale. So you, you recognize why we spend so much time looking at logarithmic scales because it's so hard to see what's going on down here because they get overpowered by these other ones. But you can see in fact that in 2015, the Ethereum Bitcoin valuation went up by about 15x from December 1st. And at the peak after 120 days in 2016, it went up um, about 7x or so. So uh, pretty interesting. Obviously, a lot of this will depend on whether Bitcoin can in fact hold the 20 week moving average. So right now, Bitcoin is at 18.8k. And if you look at the 20 week moving average, we can see that it's currently at around 12.4K. So Bitcoin, if Bitcoin were to drop, now it'd have to drop around 31% to get back down to the 20 week moving average. Now, as we continue on week by week, we know that this is going to increase by four or $500 a week. So it's going to be catching up rather quickly. Um, I mean, as long as if Bitcoin gets comfortable here, then you know it's not going to take too terribly long for this to, to really come up and, and start chasing chasing a little bit more. Um, but the point is, is this is what we want to hold as support for the next 120 days. And if Bitcoin stays above this level for the next 120 days, then if history is any indication, then the Ethereum Bitcoin ratio should do rather well. Again, there's no free lunch. There's no guarantees. This year could be completely different. But if we're just using historical data to try to help our, our inform our future decisions. And if you look at the Ethereum Bitcoin ratio itself, or sorry, this is Ethereum USD, it has been holding its own 20 week moving average as support. And if you take a measured move from where the 20 week moving average currently is, the valuation of Ethereum is approximately 46% higher. 
For Bitcoin, as measured from the 20-week moving average, the price is approximately 50 percent higher 51 percent higher or so so currently bitcoin is higher above its 20 week moving average than ethereum is so ultimately what we want to do is recognize that the major moves historically speaking have not really kicked off until december at least midway through december historically speaking is when they've kicked off this could be the first year where maybe we say okay we actually kicked it off end of november um or middle of November, in fact. But we'll have to wait and see, right? We'll have to wait and see what happens. Obviously, Ethereum was quite bullish. It still is. Uh, we're at 586. That's still pretty good in terms of how quickly we've been moving up. Um, there's going to be some, some retracements along the way. But recognize that the reason it has dropped is because Bitcoin volatility returned. Bitcoin rallied over 19K. Therefore, people wanted to chase the Bitcoin rally. And, and then now when Bitcoin starts to correct back a bit, other coins tend to correct harder. However, if Bitcoin stabilizes at this level, in fact, Ethereum will likely continue its run. And in fact, it'll be even more bullish because now Bitcoin, instead of being at 18.2 and 18.3 and testing 17K territory, it's at 18.8K and, and a slow bleed would, would still put it higher than it was before the prior rally when Ethereum started rallying. So remember, it's easy, it's easy for Ethereum to get spooked anytime, anytime Bitcoin starts to, uh, to rally. Um, and, and then when it starts to, or I should say, when Bitcoin rallies, people tend to not have as much confidence in the short term in Ethereum because they want to chase Bitcoin. When Bitcoin pulls back, Ethereum tends to have a knee-jerk reaction, but as long as Bitcoin stays bullish, you see how quickly sentiment for Ethereum can change and how quickly the Ethereum valuation can change against Bitcoin, right? I mean, it, it, it's quite remarkable how quickly it can move up. And if you if you look at where this peak was, this local top, that wick, it was essentially, it, it ended up being um, about the this sort of support area that we saw back in the summer. Um, however, remember, this channel is not about day trading or anything like that. We recognize that these moves take time. These are weekly candles. They're not daily candles. They're not four-hour candles. They're not hourly candles, I mean, or anything like that. These are weekly candles. And momentum shifts in the market, they take place over weeks and months, okay? It's not just a day-to-day a, a -day thing, right? We're, we're looking for a, a fundamental change here. And... To give you an idea, if we were to measure this as the bottom, and we went up about 57%, about which is what we did last year, and approximately what we did the year before, if we did go up by about 57%, that would put us at a valuation of 0.0443. And the current valuation of Bitcoin is around 18.8K. And um, 0.0443, times about 18.8k um i think that's i think that's like around 800 dollars, maybe a little bit higher than 800 dollars. but you can check my math um it's but it's about 800 dollars, i think so i'm not i'm not trying to say that by any means ethereum has to go to 800 dollars. i just want you guys to recognize that if history is to be repeated then this would be you know this would be the ex the expectation Right, this would be the expectation. Um, if if history is not to be repeated, and, and Ethereum does something like this against Bitcoin, and maybe goes sideways, breaks out of this trend line we've been in for the last year, or even if it goes down, this would be against what has happened historically speaking. And it doesn't mean it's impossible. There's always there's a first time for everything. It's not like for the next hundred years, Ethereum is going to always rally against Bitcoin at this time of the year. I mean, there's going to be some years where it just simply doesn't. Um, but it, we're just using historical data, looking at what it has done so far um, these these last five years. Will it happen for a sixth year? We're not sure yet, but we're sure as hell going to find out. So remember, we do have the premium list. If you guys are looking for the Black Friday sell, that will end in about nine days or so. So if you're looking for um, access to the weekly premium reports, the weekly premium videos, the Google Sheets risk dashboard, the private Telegram alerts channel, the private Telegram chat room, the trading view indicators, and the dynamic DCA selling 
dashboard, make sure you check out the Black Friday sale. You can find a link to the Black Friday sale in the description below, and you can lock in the monthly rate um, at the Black Friday prices perpetually as long as you don't cancel. So that promotion will end in about nine days, so make sure you get in before that. Um, other than that, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Let's get this Let's get the channel to 60,000 subscribers. I hope you guys enjoy the content, the slightly different approach that I take. Give the video a thumbs up. Check out the Telegram channel in the description below. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.